Welcome everyone, I'm Mr. Christopher, and today we're going to be talking about snack food in um, uh, the amount of energy in a snack food. Uh, we're going to be determining the amount of calories in a snack food and the calories per gram in a snack food. And see if we can compare what makes the best snack food and what are benefits of different snack foods. Uh, in the lab, many of you used Cheetos and different snack foods, and we measured a uh, number of different variables. Some of these variables we controlled, and other ones we measured um, and tested out. One of the things we did was we measured the mass before the reaction of the Cheeto or snack food. And we subtracted the mass after the reaction, and that gave us the change in mass of the snack food. We saw we were able to measure that pretty easily with the balance. However, the thing we were trying to find was the amount of energy uh, produced by that snack food. So to do that, on day two, many of us used water in one way or another and determined the change in temperature of the water. Now to get the change in temperature, we took the temperature uh, final minus the temperature initial. Now, some sample data we looked at, um, and again, your data may be different than this. Uh, the mass before of the Cheeto might have been 1.90 grams, the mass after might have been 1.00 grams, and the change in mass would have been the difference between those two, 0.90 grams. For the temperature, we did the same thing. We measured the water beforehand. We had to be careful not to touch the container that it was in. We just measured the water. Uh, so if we got data here, uh, the temperature final uh, might have been something like 37.5 degrees Celsius, and the temperature initial was 23.0 degrees Celsius. We can calculate and find the, uh, the change in temperature. Now, change in temperature is a calculation. The temperatures initially, these are all measurements. So measurements, they all go in the data table. Calculations, they all go in the calculation table. So two different data, two different tables representing your data. Um, so here, if you take the 37.5 minus the 23, we get a total of 14.5 degrees Celsius. That's the change in temperature for this particular, let's just say it's a Cheeto. Okay. Now, in your data tables, you want to have all of the trials you did and all of the measurements from all the trials you did. Now, from this information, though, we're trying to figure out what the best fuel is. So how do we determine what is the best? Now, when we make measurements, we know we always include units because it's best practice to have the units there. Because if you had kilograms instead of grams of mass, that would be a whole different ballgame in terms of the amount of energy. So to find out which one is the best, uh, best fuel, what we're going to do is we're going to find the amount of heat produced. Now in this case, the Cheeto, or the snack food, had a little fire on it. Let's make this a little bit better. There we go. Fire coming off of it. And we had a container above it. And that container contained water. Now, the heat hopefully it was all going from the Cheeto into the water. So the Q leaving the Cheeto is called negative Q because it's an exothermic heat producing reaction. The Q entering the water was called a positive Q because heat is going into the water. Both of these are represented by the Q equals MC delta T. Both of these. One's from the water's point of view and one is from the Cheeto's point of view. From the Cheeto's point of view, it's losing heat. And the problem we had with the Cheeto is the only thing we could get was the mass. We couldn't get the delta T, and we couldn't get the specific heat capacity. So we changed our procedure so that we could calculate the amount of energy going into the water. Now, in an ideal experiment, all the energy is going from the Cheeto into the water. However, as a source of error, we may want to consider, well, what about the heat that's going out and hitting you on the face? That would be what we think of as a source of error. So we're going to look at that information for, um, for our data. So how do we compare different snack foods to one another? So here, let's look at two different snack foods here. Um, a <coughs> cheese puff and a toasted corn snack. So the first thing you have to do is calculate your data um, based on the information given. 
So for a toasted corn snack, for example, um, our data might be a little bit different than a Cheeto. So here we have um, 0 0.34 grams. That was the mass that burned for that. Here you'll notice this number, 0 0.90, came from up above. 14.5 came from above. And the volume of water, 30 milliliters. This really should be measured um, more precisely with a graduated cylinder, but depending on how you measure it, you want to record it as such. Uh, in the second experiment, they also used 30.0 milliliters, and they had a change in temperature of 12.0 degrees Celsius uh, for the delta T. So we're going to compare these two to one another. Now you can see they didn't use the same mass burned, and the temperature change is not the same. The volume of water is the only thing that's the same here. So we're going to look at does the fuel, how does the fuel affect us? Now to compare these two, mass isn't enough, change in temperature is not enough, and volume of water obviously is not enough information. So what we need to do to compare these is we need to use our Q equals MC delta T equation. Our mass, for example, for the cheese puff is 0.90 grams. But do we put that in here? What Q are we using? Are we using the Q from the Cheeto or the Q from the water's point of view? From what we saw up above, it should be the Q from the water's point of view. Got to be the Q from the water's point of view because we can't find a change in temperature of the Cheeto. We tried. Any of your groups tried it? Put the thermometer on there. It said HHH, not so good. So this is all from the water's point of view. So the first thing we need is the mass of the water. So you've got 30 milliliters of water. We want to find out its mass. The thing we know is one milliliter is proportional to one gram. That's the density of water. So we cross multiply, obviously we're going to get 30.0 grams. The C for water is a known value, one calorie per gram degree Celsius. And then the change in temperature is, in this case, 14.5 degrees Celsius. Now when you look at this here, you'll see very quickly that the grams on top cancel out the grams on the bottom. Change uh, the temperature units, degrees Celsius, cancel the degrees Celsius, and we're left with units of calorie, which is the unit of heat that we are using right here. So here we calculate this out now using our calculator. Okay, we type in our 30 times our 1 times our 14.5, and we get an answer of about 435. This is 435 calories. That's the amount of heat that's going into the water. So it's a positive value, which makes sense for the water. So this here goes here with the calories, 435 calories. Now we can do the same thing for the toasted corn snack. Okay, we take its volume of water times the temperature change, and we get 360 calories. So now if you look at these two numbers, you say, okay, which one has the most calorie? Well, it's obviously it's the cheese puff. Cheese puff's got more calories than the toasted corn snack, so that makes the cheese puff better. However, we know, wait, we use more cheese snack. So if you use more cheese snack, of course you're going to produce more energy. So we don't have the same mass here, so we have to account for that mass difference. So here, the last thing we do is use what's called a calorie per gram. So you do a line on top of it like this, calories per gram. That gives you a ratio. Here's the calorie, 435. Divide it by the grams. That's this number right up here, 0 0.90 grams. And we take our 435 divided by 0.9. And from the Cheetos point of view, there's 483.3 calories per gram when a cheese puff is burned. That's the amount of... Sorry, that's the amount of heat released, calories per gram of Cheeto. For the toasted corn snack, we do the same calculation, and we get a value of 1059 calories per gram. Whoa, toasted corn snack. Those little teeny corn nuts, very small, lots of energy per gram. And you might see this with your snack food. Some of the almonds, some of the walnuts, some of the Cheetos maybe. Uh, some of the different foods you brought in, some will have a much higher calorie per gram than our cheese puffs. So that comparison will tell you, well, that's the best snack food calories per gram. And does it taste best? Mm, that's you know, up to your personal preference. But based on scientific research, calories per grams is that is much better than the 
calories per gram over keto. Now when we talk about calories, okay, we can compare these two to each other. So let's look at the cheese puff data. It's 483.3 calories per gram. And if we look at the cheese puff data, let's look and see if we can compare that to how that compares to the nutritional fact of cheese puffs. In this case, we're looking at the calories in Cheetos. So in the calories in Cheetos, you'll see, wait a minute, there's 160 calories in a serving of Cheetos. Wait, before we had like 483 calories per gram. That seems awfully different. That's a lot more calories. So what happened? What did we do wrong? What did they do wrong? So then we got to look, well, that's, that's calories, and that's for 29 grams. So we take 160 divided by 29 grams. Maybe that'll give us a better answer. 160 divided by 29, 5.517, 5.517 calories per gram. That doesn't look any better. That looks worse. So we got a little bit of a problem. Now, one thing you'll notice, what do you notice about this word here? first letter. It's capitalized. The capital calorie is different from the lowercase calorie. What? Why do we do that? Capital calorie actually refers to what is called a kilocalorie. That's a thousand calories in one kilocalorie, and one kilocalorie is equal to one food calorie, as this is commonly referred to. Now, food calories, we think of those all the time. So how many calories you eat in a day? 2,000 calories, 3,000 calories, maybe 6,000 calories. Lots of calories. Michael Phelps ate a lot more calories than that. So when we look at calories, we think, wait a minute, that's the number. So this is not normal chemistry calories. This is kilocalories. So if we multiply this by 1,000 to get chemistry calories, this gives us 5,517 chemistry calories per gram. Whoa. That's a lot more. Now, I don't know if that helps us at all. We're still off by a ton. We had 43 and they had 5,517. Why don't these numbers match? What's going on with those numbers? Why, when they measure the calories in Cheetos, they publish this value? Now, the one thing to know about nutritional facts is they have to be experimentally accurate. Okay, this one here, 160, that means it could be between 150 and 170, because this here is the measured digit, the 6. This is an uncertain digit, and since it's uncertain, it's not significant. So it could be between 150 to 170 calories. It still doesn't affect our result, but it's still a much bigger number. So let's look at how we can use this information. Okay. The sample data said we had 483. This data says instead of 483 calories per gram, we had 5,500 calories per gram. So why are those so different? Well. Think about it. We burn the Cheeto, did all the heat go into the water? No, probably not. Where did some of it go? Your face, your hand, the air. Did some of it even go into the can you were heating up, or the beaker you were heating up, or the other container that you put the water in? Was there metal in between? the fire and the actual the actual container was that metal being heated up so all of these are possible sources where the heat went so you got your cheeto not all the heat's going into the water some of it is but a lot of it's going into other things this here is what is called efficiency and whenever you burn something through combustion to transfer all the energy is very difficult to do so you might ask, well, how did they get this huge number? Were they able to transfer all of the energy? The answer is pretty close. 
What was used to determine that number in calories per gram is what is called a bomb calorimeter. In a bomb calorimeter, you put your fuel here inside of a small container. There's an electrical lead here shown by the positive and negative, and that uh, starts the reaction. There's also additional fuel put in that they take out the energy change from, so they put a fuel, um, a, uh, like a gasoline or something else, like a, uh, a gas that is easily combustible, and that starts the reaction. And then from that reaction, they have the fuel itself um, ignites. And the energy is transferred into this larger container of water. This larger container of water has a stirrer in it that constantly stirs and moves the water around. Because you know as you heat up the water, you'd heat up the, this area, but not quite where the thermometer is. So they stir the water around. This allows the thermometer's temperature to go up. That gives them the delta T. They take the mass before and the mass after. They perform the same calculations that you did to find the calories. And then they get the calories per gram. And that is their final ratio. In an ideal calorimeter, no heat is transferred to the environment. That's why this has a top on it. And this here, they don't want any heat. So good materials that don't conduct heat. Sometimes styrofoam uh, works better. The one we used, well, is aluminum can or, or a beaker. Not quite as good at keeping the heat going to what you want to heat up. So this is a way of uh, fixing that energy loss or energy transfer that wasn't going into the actual, um, actual water. So this is how you can measure the fuel of any food. I always like to think about, well, what do they put in here? Wouldn't it be fun to just say, go to in and out and get a double-double? How many calories it does it have? Well, let's stick it in a bomb calorimeter and blow it up. Well, we blow it up, find out how many calories it has, calories per gram. That tells us the amount in that double-double cheeseburger. Just an idea of fun things you can do. Could you do it with any food? Yep. Sometimes you got to remove the water, though, because water, we know, doesn't print so well. So that's how to find out the energy in a particular fuel. We'll see you next time. May the chemistry be with you.